Hi everyone, it's Tarrant. And Stella from The Dice Tower. Thanks for joining us. Today we'll be teaching you how to play Inheritance, a game designed by Jeffrey CCH and Kenneth YWN and published by Icemax. Let's get to the game. In Inheritors, the king has passed without an heir, and now players are fighting to take his place. Through a careful and crafty game of hand management, players will court the clans, fight for honours, go on quests, all the while building up their influence with the different realms. Once the draw deck is empty, or the quests and honours are gone, the player with the highest score wins. To set up, take all of the small cards and separate the eight that have this icon in the top right corner. Set these aside face up. If you're playing two players, choose any one of the five colours and remove its 14 cards from the game. And at two or three players, remove the talent cards which don't match your player count. Hunt through the deck to find a one of each colour Shuffle them up and deal one card to each player. Shuffle any that remain back into the deck and then deal 10 more cards to each player. Players hold their cards secretly in hand. Now set up the main play area. You'll shuffle up the quest cards and deal out five face down. Shuffle up the honor cards and deal out five face up. And shuffle up the colored clan cards and deal out one face up of each color. In the two-player game, you'll use only four of each card and need to make sure you don't use the quest that references the colour that's out of the game. Below this, place the rest of the draw deck and deal out three cards face up. Each of these forms the start of one of the game's three market rows. Keep the epics and special talents nearby face up. You may not need them, it will depend on which clan cards are in the game. Give each player a player aid, and whoever has the red seal on it goes first. You're now ready to play. Inheritors is played in turns, starting from the first player and going clockwise around the table. On your turn, you will take one action, and you have five possible actions you can take. Firstly, you may play a number card from your hand into one of your number piles. If you do not currently have a number pile of the colour you've chosen, you must play the number one. If you do have a number pile of the colour you've chosen, then you must play the next number numerically. Cards run from one to six, and the number of each card in the deck is indicated by these icons. At the end of the game, each pile will score points equal to the number on its topmost card, and this will account for most of your points. Secondly, you can discard any one card from your hand by placing it onto the top of any one of the three market rows, like so. Then draw two new cards from the deck. Thirdly, you can discard one card from your hand in the same manner described before to pick up one of the other two market rows, adding it to your hand, as long as the top card of that market row has the same number, colour, or name as the card you discarded. Discarding this red three, or indeed discarding any blue card, would have allowed this market row to be drawn. Right now, picking up this market row would require another advisor to be discarded. For the purposes of this action, tomes or epics count as a wild color, so this play would allow either of these piles to be picked up. Once you're done with your action, Replenish any empty hole in the market with the top card from the deck. Fourthly, you can discard any three coloured cards of the same colour, either to the same or different discard piles, in order to draw one card from the deck and take one of the quest cards at random. Quests give you a way of scoring points at the end of the game. They'll always be worth one point, but they'll be worth two if you meet a certain objective by having cards left in your hand. You should look at your quest, but then flip it face down. Your fifth and final option is to play a talent card from your hand, and these are the black coloured cards with the text heading. When you play a talent card, you put it out of play permanently. There are three different basic talents in the game spy, advisor, and lobbyist. 
when you play an advisor, it allows you to pick up any two cards from the market rows. These can be top, middle or bottom, and same or different piles. Replenish any empty piles after your action. When you play a lobbyist, you can immediately take a player number card action, skipping over one number in the sequence. So for example, playing this purple three on the purple one. You're not allowed to do this if you currently have the highest or equal highest pile in that color. So this player could not play the yellow five, but you can use it to move ahead of somebody else. So this player could play a lobbyist to move up to blue four. Finally, there is the spy, whom you can play to steal and play a card from another player's hand. You must announce a number card which you can currently legally play. Let's say, for example, blue five. If the player that you're stealing from has that card in hand, then they must reveal it and play it onto your pile. If the targeted player did not have the card in hand, then instead you draw one card from the draw deck. There are four other special talent cards, and how these work are explained on the clan cards which bring them into play. Playing one of these is done in the same way and is part of the player talent action if you use it. In addition to your action, you may claim a clan card and any number of honor cards that you qualify for. You become eligible to take a clan card as soon as you have reached at least three on its colored number pile. Clan cards are first come first serve, but you can only take one for the whole game. So you may choose not to take one in order to take one of a preferred color later. Once you choose to claim a clan, pick it up from the central market and add it to your tableau. This will give you an immediate or ongoing benefit which could include adding a special talent card to your hand. When you meet the criteria showing on an honor card, then simply take that card. And you'll always want to do this. There's no reason not to take as many as you can. Add it to your tableau and it will be worth one point at game's end. The game comes with eight different honor cards to choose from. These ones all require that you have a certain number of number piles with a number equal or higher than what's shown on the honor. These two require you to reveal three of the matching card type in your hand. This requires you've gained two quests. And this requires that you successfully use a spy to get someone to play a card of number two or higher into your area. The game end is triggered when either all quests and honors have been taken or when the draw deck is empty. Continue playing until all players have had the same number of turns and then count up final scores. Add up all of the top numbers on your number piles. This will be your base score. To that, add one point for each honor you've claimed. Reveal all of your quests and then gain two points if you met the objective and one if you failed. In this case, the player wants two blue cards in hand, which is achieved, so two points. Now resolve relics and tomes. These will only score you points if they're in your hand at the end of the game. For relics, check to see whether among all players, you have the highest or equal highest number pile in the relics color. If you do, you gain one point, and if you don't, you lose one point. Players then add up their total number of tomes, and if the moose is in play, epics count as tomes. The player or players with the most tomes and epics gains three points. Second place gains one. If tied, all tied players gain the higher number of points. Finally, add any bonus points that your clan might give you. The player with the highest score wins, and in the event of a tie, whoever has the most tomes wins, if still tied, most total cards in hand, which includes tomes and relics, and if still tied, victory is shared. And that's how to play Inheritors. If you find this video useful, please help us by hitting that like button and subscribe to the Dice Tower if you haven't already done so. And if you have any questions, comments or feedback, please leave that in the comment section below. Thanks for watching and see you next time.